you know, I think, yes. I think that um, at that point, I think he was just kind of happy that the spear didn't go into him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, well, I mean, mom's dead, that's something, but, you know, at least I'm alive. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think, I think obviously he had a strained relationship with his mother anyway, and she had banished him and, and all that. I, I, I mean, I think, you know, like, I, I love my mother, and if it was like my mother, that would have been, I would have been like screaming and crying and not crazy, but I, I think, I think they had a, I, I mean, I also feel like she like beat him a lot as a boy, so. Yeah. yeah. It was a little like, yeah, my, next, <laughs> my next question is for Taja. Do you know about the sh ship that people are talking about, Sky, Spy, sorry, Spy Mechanic and Recto? What? <laughs> Everybody wants Raven and Echo to get together in space. <laughs> Awesome. That actually is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I can go on more than here. Yeah. We all thought that'd be a great duo, and everybody, like, everybody's like, Becco, Bellark, and we're not like, we're like, Recco! <laughs> That's our ship name. That's amazing. Yeah. My roommate, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, they live together. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I also have two questions, and I also want to ask about um, Queen Naya because I feel like she was, uh, she was kind of um, hyped up. Uh, a bit in season two, and then in season three, I feel like we didn't get enough of her because she was killed right away and she was so scary. So, and, <laughs> um, and so, and we know that it's like she would like find like her enemies' weaknesses and behead them. And that was probably, I imagine, something that she did herself, unless Echo was the one doing it. So it's like how, um, my question is, so for your three um, characters, it's like, how on board were they with her beheading? And could that possibly be the reason why Rowan was banished? Because he wasn't on board with it. Mm -hmm. I always assumed that, and I sort of said this in the previous panel, is that I think Antari was just sort of blindly following whatever she said. So I think she was probably on board with her doings. Okay. Yeah, it's the same with Echo. I think Echo spent a large part of her life um, just wanting to please Naya. Um, though, what's interesting is in season three, the way that they had written the script was that she was not happy um, about delivering the news to Mount Weather. Mm -hmm. uh, like, Echo was, you know, when she, that moment where she comes up to Queen Naya, um, that she's actually pissed off that um, she has to do what she, she had to do what she had to do. So I think like, you know, in her youth, Echo was just very blindly following orders, but I think, like, um, as she became an adult, she started developing a conscience, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a astute, um, you know, observation that perhaps, you know, maybe that was, uh, I don't think maybe the only reason, but I think probably within the, the package of things that kind of, you know, separated him. Okay, thank you. And my second question is, if, um, as Gata, it's like all three of you were like within, it's like a family on Game of Thrones, what would that be like? <laughs> I've never seen Game of Thrones, uh, I don't know. know. But it's very... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen Game of Thrones. What would it be like? Because it's like, would they be like wildlings or in Winterfell? Because obviously Oh, nice. man. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it, but I don't, it's a great question, but I don't know, what do you think? I don't know, probably, well, definitely up north, whether they're yeah, beyond north, the wall or not, yeah. I don't know. Probably wouldn't want the throat, probably wouldn't want the Iron Throne at all, they'd think it was stupid and they'd probably just kill anyone who invades their land. That's a great That's answer, yeah, much. spot on. <laughs> all right, thank you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Any, any more insights? Or <laughs> I think Echo would be like, I'm getting myself a dragon. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so my question is actually for Zach, or maybe Rhiannon, because you said you watched Shameless mm. in your panel this morning. Um, <laughs> um, so, so Zach played Jody on Shameless. How do you think Jody would fare if thrown into the world of the hundred? He would have sex with everyone. <laughs> Yeah, he would, he would love it. He'd be like, oh, sweet. Like, you know, I think he'd enjoy it. Oh, sweet. Yeah, he'd be like, 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 Jody is like, he's like a pit bull. 
like you know his, his mind like he's like I, that's why I, he's like a, like a nice dog like he's, he's excited and happy about everything so. would he survive though I mean, he, I mean hopefully yeah <laughs> you know he just like that's why he gets back around yeah. <laughs> yeah. He would just keep everybody away from him except the one he wants to see. Yeah. yeah, he would just, he would, yeah. He'd, he'd, that's, he wants to know. Yeah. He'd be the naked grounder. Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of tribe. Yeah. He would just, the 14th yeah. clan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would be the name of that, that clan? What would it be? Nude crew. Nude crew. Nude crew. Sex crew. Sex crew. Sex crew. Sex crew. A fast crew. Close free crew. <laughs> Thank you for Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, you know how like in high school you get those senior superlatives, like most likely to get married or most likely to become famous or most, <coughs> most likely to, I don't know, we had end up in prison in my high school yearbook, so that was, <laughs> I didn't get it. No. <laughs> Are you asking what all Yeah, what would your characters be? Oh, I don't know my character, but I, I was yeah, most, or you. I was most likely to become a stripper. Oh. <laughs> But not too far off. I'm like, what did you do in high school? Everything. Were you on like the dance team? You were like the cheerleader? I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess people just thought I was a stripper. I don't know. That's amazing. <laughs> um, most likely to, what are the options? Yeah. I don't know anything. Succeed, um, have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, be in Murderer's Row, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, um, yeah, I remember like maybe most likely to rule the world. Oh, nice. Uh, maybe most likely to attempt to rule the world. <laughs> Excellent question. And Thank then we're you. supposed to give our like character. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> Most likely to get drowned in a fountain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Zach, you took off your sunglasses, but I'm gonna put them uh, on. Oh, nice. here we go. Here we go. This is tall. I have those oh. same sunglasses, by the way, but not. You do. Great. I, we should I'm match. Um, so first off, as Gator forever. So yeah. they're my favorite. Um, I think the show tends to kind of antagonize uh, as Gaeta uh, because they're pinned against the protagonist. Um, but I think what the show doesn't really do is address the abuse that kind of they all three characters went through uh, with Naya. Uh, and I think we kind of see a redemption plot with Zach um, and, and um, with your character, Rowan, uh, and Echo soon, I hope. Um, and um, I kind of want to see what Ontario's redemption plot would be like. Uh, so I guess like. The question is like, how, uh, what would that be? And like, I guess, how do you kind of talk about the abuse that happened? Well, I think The 100 does a good job of showing how your past and your upbringing, how it affects you um, with all the characters. And I think it would have been cool to see, without the chip, obviously, to see what would have happened next for her. I would have really, really loved to see some kind of redemption because not everyone's all bad. Um, and I think there had to have been good in her heart somewhere. It would have been nice to see. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, so I actually have two questions, if that's okay. Um, the first one is, were there any stories growing up that you guys really loved um, that inspired you in what you do now? I'm an English teacher, so I love that Aww. question. Um, the Little Train That Could, I know that that's <laughs> But like, I love that book growing up, and to this day, like, like when I'm like, like out running or doing like anything, I'm just like I think I can, I think I can, um, which I think is really important. Yeah. And I, I so I really, I really like that. Like as a kid, I don't know. That's really sweet. Um, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Everybody poops. Oh. <laughs> also, I love. Sorry, every day. <laughs> I might not tell that one to my English students. They're 12 or 13. That one went over well. As a child, like, um, I don't know. Like, uh, I read a lot of French books, so I was French immersion. So, Le Petit Prince sticks out. Because um, we had to read that, like, 
every year. I've written so many papers on that book. <laughs> but I got more kind of inspired, I think, in adulthood with literature. Um, I think I was just like, my mom and I on Sundays, like we used to always, my mom would get like the Sunday, like the weekend paper, and like we used to like sit in bed and like read together. So like we used to read, like digest like a lot of books, um, which is a great tradition that we started. But um, I don't know if there was one in particular. I think there was just too many. <laughs> Mine's kind of similar to Zach's, and I remember it very well from being a kid. It's the tortoise and the hare, that story that's like, you just, again, you just keep going. It doesn't matter at what speed, you're going to get there then. That's, nice. that's a great one. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my second question is for Zach, and that's if you remember any of your Camp Wanaki cheers when you were a kid. Oh my God. Hi, Zach. <laughs> Did you go to Robindale? Uh, no, Maria Simone, Val's daughter. Oh, whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, um, I do. I remember uh, probably all of them. Um, Could you say one for us? Yeah, let's, um, let, let's, see. let's see which ones we should do. Um, well, there was W-I-N-A-U-K-W-E. We're not geek, we're not geek, we're not geek. I mean, that was, that, that was a classic one. Um, but uh, we, we also had like the, we had the, the lunchroom cheers um, that we would do when we wanted, you know, we wanted like the color war leaders and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we was like, those are all weird ones. Like we had like, it's like fried chicken, watermelon, hands in our pants. We won't wait till we get the assistance. Like, we did, we was like there was that one, um, a little birdie in a tree. We did that one a lot. I mean, we did all of them. But by the way, I loved going to that camp. I had so much fun and, uh, Pretty much, I think, learned a lot of life lessons there. And also, you know, I don't know, it just was awesome. I, I loved it. I wish I could just like go live in summer camp for the rest of my life. Come visit any time. I'm up in New Hampshire. No Thank you. way. Actually, I really Dad says hi too, by the way. Do tell him I say hi. I, I want to go up there. I mean, we're actually really close right now. Um, I was actually <laughs> talking about it on the panel before how we used to come to New York. You know, we come to, to Boston to go to uh, baseball games. And, my dad worked there, her dad worked there, you know, it was, it was, it was awesome. I, uh, now I'm like having like this nostalgic moment. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, say hi. Okay. Please. All, right, all right, so my question is, if there was a musical episode of The 100, assuming you guys are still on it, what would your musical number be like? So would you do like a cover of a song? Would you do your own thing? I, so I no. space. Yeah. <laughs> All right, stop. I want to break and this scene. I was back with a brand new adventure. Something. Grabs a hold of me tightly. Flows like, like a harpoon. Did it again. I think we will ever stop. Yo, I don't know. Turn off the lights and I glow. To the extreme, I'm like the light like a vandal. Light up the stage and watch me jump like a candle. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, there's a piece of someone, some extra. Every convention, I'm gonna, every convention, I'm gonna be like, if you know the extra, <laughs> tell him to send us the video. One guy was like, we're like, because we were singing that a lot on set. We're always like, I just, I just, yeah. uh -huh. so we had, it, was, it was the day that we had the whole army. But we had like a 300 person army of Ice Nation. And so oh, like, we're all like, we're like, we should, we should take this. And we did, and one guy was like, oh, I'll, I'll take it. And we're like, excellent, so send it to us. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and then, I mean, and then yeah, we got <laughs> With like 300 Ice Nation being like, Ice, Ice Nation. Some guy, some guy in Vancouver's out there. Oh and he, my God. Someone I'll find you. Knows this, this thing. And if any of you know him, please tell him to tweet it at us or send it to us, because we, we really want to see that video. It's really awesome to us basically doing a musical yeah. a video <laughs> with all of that art. We gotta find it. And horses and like Bob and Ian are tied up on the ground. And I'll do it saying, find it for you. We should, we should ask. We should yeah. like, You're singing Brought the Bear to Eliza is basically what happened. Because that's yeah. the same scene. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. when we brought the bear out. The bear was like, oh, who's, who's coming yeah, we, yeah, we summoned the bear. That's my shit. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Okay. Okay, 
well, one thing is, I really remember you tweeting asking if Echo had a song, what song you would, would it be? Yes. And I replied saying Ice Ice Baby. 